What's up, Taiwan? I'm Eric Gao, bringing you the news this Sunday afternoon. Leaders from Japan and South Korea have met in Seoul to talk about deepening security cooperation to counter increased aggression from North Korea. It comes as South Korea increasingly looks to Japan to help stabilize the region, even as it wraps up military exercises with the U.S. Jaime Okan reports. It's full steam ahead for the South Korean and U.S. Marines as they race to the shore. They're simulating how to capture an enemy beach in South Korea as part of the annual sang Yung military exercises, which aim to boost security cooperation between the U.S. and South Korea. sang Yung translates to twin dragons, a symbol of the two countries. Exercises like these are becoming more frequent, demonstrating the close ties between South Korea and its allies as relations with the North continue to sour. Pyongyang continues to ramp up its weapons development, testing missiles and drones around the Korean Peninsula. But South Korea isn't just leaning into its relationship with the U.S. for security. It's looking to neighboring Japan, which is also facing military pressure from Pyongyang, to help tackle this challenge together. Leaders and security officials from Seoul and Tokyo recently met in the Korean capital to push this cooperation forward. South Korean officials have accused North Korea of providing millions of shells to Russia as it continues its invasion of Ukraine. That's an exchange for military equipment that North Korea can use to produce more weapons. To handle this threat, allies in Asia will have to work together, creating more robust relationships like the one between Japan and South Korea. This relationship is, is absolutely critical for the stability of the broader region. Um, it, it, you won't kind of overemphasize this. So it's very good that, that South Korea and Japan are, are, are working more closely together. For the U.S. alliance with Japan and the U.S. alliance with South Korea, they are separate, obviously, uh, also to work, so to, to get some sort of uh, triangle uh, together. With this new security triangle still in the works, the U.S., South Korea and Japan are showing that they're working hand in hand as they tackle a more dynamic security environment in Asia. Dolphin Chen and Jaime Okan for Taiwan Plus. The Chinese Navy has increased its presence in the Indian Ocean. It's a matter of strategic concern for countries in the region. Chinese military vessels have come in close contact with the Indian Navy in recent days, while India has launched a new nuclear submarine. To learn more about these developments, Ado Brar spoke to Shekhar Sina, former Vice Admiral of the Indian Navy. Why are Chinese naval vessels in the Indian Ocean? Their submarines are basically snooping around for the uh, the hydrology of our uh, area. So are these, you know, the ocean research vessels. They also have a very similar task of snooping, either underwater hydrology, or when we do the missile firing, the signature of the missile radars. Why does China want to gain access to ports in the Indian Ocean region? China has got a policy of uh, everything is dual use. They will take over, they will buy a port or they will do the economic coercion to your neighboring countries. When they can't return the debt, the interest, they will ask for equity. In equity swap, they will get access to these ports. When you get access to these ports, not only for merchandise, not only for trade and commerce, but it can also be used by the warships. They already have Ambantota port. They also have Colombo port to some extent. Gwadar is with them. Zubuti port is with them. Only yesterday they have signed a security partnership with Morocco. So it means that we have a east coast of Africa, very close to the Mozambique channel, from where virtually every ship has to pass through. Any ship which is rounding the, you know, the Cape of Budo. India has recently launched a new nuclear submarine. Is India trying to counter China's growing presence in the Indian Ocean? We have a second strike capability. This is the second in the series. We will be making more of these. The third one is about to be commissioned within five, six months. That will also be ready. 
these are called SSBNs, nuclear powered and nuclear tipped ballistic missiles. India has a policy of no first use as far as the nuclear weapons are concerned, meaning that we have the nuclear weapon, but we will want the first ones to use. If we are not the first ones, then it means that we will respond to when we are attacked by a nuclear weapon. Now, how do you attack? And that is why it is called a second strike. First strike you will take from the from the adversary, and as a response, you will launch a missile. How can you launch? You can launch from a land-based silos. You can launch from an aircraft airborne, for example, the Su-30, or you can launch from sea. From sea, submarine are the best because they cannot be spotted. They are underwater and their position cannot be ascertained. And that was former Indian Navy Vice Admiral Shekhar Sina. Super Typhoon Yagi has killed at least four people in northern Vietnam. That's after the powerful storm tore through southern China and the Philippines. The total death toll is now at least 22 people. Joyce Sun has the latest. Asia's most powerful storm this year, now making landfall in northern Vietnam. Ripping metal panels off roofs and uprooting thousands of trees. Leaving just a thin trunk for this person to hold on to against raging winds in the port city of Haiphong. Super Typhoon Yagi has forced tens of thousands of people in coastal towns to evacuate. Meanwhile, in the capital, people took cover under bridges as riding their motorbikes became virtually impossible. Vietnam is the third country to be hit by the super typhoon. Yagi's power peaked in China's Hainan, an island home to over 10 million, killing at least two people there and cutting power in over 800,000 homes. The storm had already left at least 16 people dead in the Philippines, the first country it hit, where residents are now trying to recover, cleaning away mud and debris from their homes. Here in Vietnam, people come out cautiously to gather bags of sand and brick to shield their homes from further damage. Authorities warn people to stay inside as powerful winds are expected to continue as the storm moves inland and is forecast to move into neighboring Laos. Howard Zhang and Joyce Zin for Taiwan Plus. Pope Francis held a Sunday mass for a crowd of 30,000 people in Papua New Guinea as the head of the Catholic Church continues his tour of Asia. Pope Francis is on his first visit to the country, part of a historic 12-day trip. The Pope told the crowd that, quote, God is near them, even though they live in a far and distant land. Francis is scheduled to travel to the remote town of Vanamo to meet with Catholic missionaries later on Sunday. Taiwan is upping its domestic defense industry by establishing a new manufacturing campus for military drones. The site in Jai County in the south will cost about 215 million U.S. dollars, and it will include factories, hangars, and drone testing facilities. Taiwan is looking to have enough capacity to build 15,000 drones a month by 2028. The Postal Service has apologized after accidentally sending double salaries to over 10,000 soldiers this month. Now, this error stems from a single branch in Taizong responsible for distributing the money. The Postal Service says a new employee made a mistake when processing the payroll. And sadly for the soldiers involved, they won't get to keep the extra cash, almost 12 million U.S. dollars total, Postal officials say they have already collected most of the excess money. Mm. Worshippers from a temple in Yunling have carried a statue of the goddess Matsu all the way up Jade Mountain. A team of 10 worshippers brought the icon up Taiwan's highest peak, also known as Yushan, to commemorate the Beigang Tian Temple's 330th anniversary and to seek blessings for Taiwan and for the entire world. The climb had originally been planned for July, but it was delayed because of Typhoon Kami. 
诶，那今年都好，正逢朝天宫三百建庙三百三十周年。哦，我想讲像大妈做起来吼，啊，一个一个做一个祈福安尼，互大家平平安安安尼。恁十当前的话，还是做妈做起来。啊，即卖哦，我年轻一代哦，我想嘛是爱传承老一辈精神。China's bubble tea market is transforming as the country experiences an economic downturn and young people are becoming more frugal. They are choosing cheaper bubble tea options, and companies are entering the market with new, more affordable drinks. Cadence Coranto reports. 然后今年回归了，我们来尝一下它的口感吧。Influencer Stacy Chen is reviewing bubble tea drinks for her nearly 200,000 followers on Chinese social media. 但凡其他的口感比较重的情况下，无花果的味道就很容易被。The Taiwanese milky sweet drinks paired with chewy tapioca balls have become hugely popular in China. Particularly among tech-savvy young consumers, last year the market was worth over 21 billion U.S. dollars, with around half a million stores selling the trendy beverage across the country. Many of China's biggest bubble tea companies gained popularity by offering premium products as pricey status symbols. Attractive when the country's economy was booming and living standards were rising. Cups of bubble tea sold for around 30 yuan, or just under 5 US dollars. But the industry is changing. There's new competition from companies offering the popular drink for very cheap. 就是因为现在现有的市场已经饱和了，所以他们得下沉市场去做增量。那下沉市场去做增量，能干嘛呢？就是降价。降价，把价格打到最低，打到比较低的位置，然后来保持自己的市场竞争力。Some brands are now selling cups of bubble tea for under one U.S. dollar, or less than eight yuan. The biggest chain in China by store count gained a following primarily by offering such affordable drinks. It now has 32,000 stores across the country. These lower prices, a welcome development for young Chinese consumers whose spending power may no longer be what it was. 再加上以前的话，可能是高端茶饮会做的比较多一点。那现在其实可能大家对这种日常消费的品类的重视度没有那么高了啊啊！对对对，虽然可能每天在喝，但是如果每天三十多，可能还是会有一些压力。A crucial driver of the country's economy. China's young people are becoming more frugal, seeking discounts on everything from food to travel, according to an online survey and consumer trends analysts. Many of them are struggling to find jobs as the country's economy experiences a downturn. Over 15 percent between the ages of 16 to 24 were unemployed earlier this year, much higher than the national average. And for those with jobs, making ends meet is no easy task. 工作压力也大，现在这个经济大环境也不好，然后的薪资这些都都不太乐观，然后可能会选择购物时一些。And this growing frugality among China's young consumers is expected to affect the country's economy, already coming into focus when they buy their bubble tea, a trend that's gone from luxury to practicality. Dolphin Chen and Cadence Coranta for Taiwan Plus. Thanks for tuning in for What's Up Taiwan. Visit our website or follow us on social media to get more updates from us. Now, before we go, relax and enjoy the rest of your weekend with these twin baby elephants in southern Myanmar. I'm Eric Gao. Take care, and we'll see you next time.